Hi folks and welcome to this week's Reactivate. Now we have another special episode for you this week. Now, when I first started with Extreme Robots a few months ago, on my first day, actually the day before the first show in Portsmouth, I got to know Greg Atkin. Now Greg is uh, essentially the supremo of the featherweight division here at Extreme Robots. He's responsible for putting together the fight cards at the weekend. He's responsible for um, making sure everybody's checked in, for for weights, for, for all of the stuff that goes into making our featherweight division of what it is, goes down to Greg. Now Greg was kind enough to give me about 20 minutes of his time to explain the different weight classifications. So if you're new to combat robotics and you live in the UK, of course, Greg does a great job of explaining the differences between what we have in the UK and what we have in the US. Now, this was my before my first day on the job, so I came this uh, came at this rather as a complete newbie. So hopefully for you guys as well, this will be really useful if you are new to combat robotics. There's a few sound issues, as you would expect, while the guys are trying to build the arena. We've done our best to try and level those out, but there will be a couple of little um, you know, explosions in the background and what have you. But um, it's an incredible interview with Greg. He's so knowledgeable. He knows so much about robots, not just the weight classifications. Uh, so this is a really, really good watch. So enjoy my chat with Greg Atkin, all about the different weight classes here at Extreme Robots and around the world. So folks, we are backstage the day before the debut portrait show. And I've got Greg, who I've got to be honest, has done me a lot of favours sorting out the featherweights. Now, for those who don't know, the featherweights always have their, if you like, their own showcase uh, before we start the, the main show with the heavyweights. So Greg's been talking me through, this is incredible, the different levels, not only setting up, making it safe, powering on, but also the different weight classes and how extensive they are. Uh, yeah, I, I say we have about four primary classes, mainstream classes here in the United Kingdom. Sure. So we have heavyweights, which we'll be seeing sort of later on. Yeah. Then we have the featherweights, which we'll also be seeing at the show. Then below that we have the beetle weight scene, which has its own micro microcosm. Sort yeah. of. Um, they've, they've had their own TV shows, like that the beetle weight community have made by, for themselves. And then we have the smallest weight class, which is an amp, which are, which are these little amp weights. So, I can't get over how small. Come and have a look at this. Like, so, so what's a maximum weight for? An so athlete? these are 150 grams, <laughs> and they must fit in a cube four four inches by four inches squared. Okay, wow. And so, how big an arena do you need for something like this? Or was a minimum or maximum size? Oh, um, there's you. It's it, it, it. I'd say probably you know. Couple of meters, maybe less. No, less than less. Than. So after and weight in the UK, what, what do we move to next? So there are beetle weights, which are yeah. one and a half kilos. The and the Americans would call these three pounders. Mm -hmm. It's slightly we run slightly heavier at weights than yeah. the Americans do. They have their own system, and I don't have one to, uh, to demonstrate. There'll probably be some in between the two. It's not really um, the Americans have one pounders. Yep. which they call hand weights, which right. makes a load of confusion. But Good. you can buy, for example, these kits, which are made of wood and therefore are termite weights. <laughs> wow. That's amazing. So this is all, so with the exception of electronics and wheels. Yes. So this is the this is laser cut wood, and you, can, <laughs> you you pop it out and you sort of slide it together IKEA style. Um, and the other great in, is that you actually build the transmitter yourself as well. It comes with the pieces to make the transmitter. So um, I did a challenge with um, three of my friends to... So um, hang on, the controller's wooden as well? Yeah. And um, control the spinner. I'm ready. I'm ready. Put me in, Put me in coach. Go on. Uh, one, of, one of the button, shoulder buttons controls the... Well, that's too much now. I'm too scared. I'm too scared. <laughs> Um, so a friend, so two friends and I, over lockdown, we bought a kit each of these, and we built them on Zoom as a sort of like a lockdown project, right. see who could do this the fastest. So I got 62 minutes. Um, so you made that in 62 minutes. 62 minutes from 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 parts to to robots. Now these 500 gram tends to be the sort of thing like John. Uh, at Extreme Robots does outreach programs. Yeah. They can be, um, those are servo motors, they use cardboard as armor. These are great ways of getting kids into robots. Yeah, those absolutely. Sort of like ready-made kits, uh, but they aren't 
combat ready, so to speak. That you don't really have serious combat. So it would just be a friendly scuffle. Absolutely, definitely. <laughs> Or they make good house robots for the end. So above beetle weights, again, yeah. it's the featherweights of the monk that okay. we've had for years and years and years. They are 13 and a half, 13.6 kilos, which translates to 30 pounds right. in American. So you've got the double, you almost have a sort of a double the weight mm -hmm. going from uh, ant to beetle to feather. Yep. Um, they, they can be, um, the Dutch have a class called raptor weights, which are about five five to eight kilos. Okay. They've been catching on a little bit more, but they are still very more a continental thing than, right. than a British thing. But there are events in Yorkshire designed for hobby weights. Hobby weight, right, okay. That's because I've seen the term hobby weight a lot. And there's a newbie to like combat robotics. Yes. So what's the definition of yeah, hobby weight? So hobby weight um, is was the American term for the five kilo robots. Okay. I can't remember exactly how much it is. Now, the Dutch and the Germans develop hobby weights separately. I can't give you the specific details of Canada. Fine. I think they had specific specific rules. I think you'll be specific enough, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, but now uh, the hobby weight slash raptor weight class is coming to select events in Yorkshire. You can look up Robo Dojo if you're interested in those sorts of things. Uh, so they tend to be smaller than uh, featherweight, but they are still just as destructive because okay. I'll be honest with you, northern events are much more destructive than southern ones. Then above uh, featherweight, um, back in the old Robot War series, there used to be a lightweight class. Mm -hmm. That's pretty much almost extreme, extinct outside of, I think, China, India, and Brazil developing countries, right. where it's still very popular with the 30 kilos. What's fascinating about this is that Although we have featherweights, middleweights, heavyweights, pretty yeah. much. That's, that's what we've six three robots has. I never knew there was this. I, I knew obviously uh, you look at the FRA and the list of yeah. handweights and beetleweights, but internationally there seems to be so many. Well, there, but this is this is a really interesting thing. So middleweights are very recent. Hang on. Sorry. It's like they're trying to build an arena or something. <laughs> Um, middleweights are a very recent addition to the British robot combat scene. Right. Um, they have, again, they're very popular amongst developing countries, particularly Brazil, China, and even like Australia. And, this, and, the, and the thing is, they, these are countries connected primarily by air freight, not by trains, not by roads. So if you want to go, you know, you want to go from, uh, you know, Delhi to Chennai. Yep. That's like. What an eight? You know, that's not a journey you can even make in a day. That's, that's a that's that's a four-hour flight at yeah. the very least. Um, and a hundred kilo robot can't take you to the place. A sixty robot one, theoretically, yeah. you can. So that's why I think the developing world took to middle and lightweights, and they're still the kings of it. Like, right. ask any any of the middleweights. John has been to India. Um, Alex Botwright from Crackers and Smash has been to China. Yeah. They know, you know, they take it very seriously. Those weight classes there, it's very serious business. But here in the UK and in the United States, the heavyweights have always been the big, the big, you know, 100 kilos, 250 pounds. Uh, the super heavyweights died out in Canada because there was one <laughs> robot called Ziggy that just won everything. Like no. And what kind of weight are we talking to super heavies? Super heavies were 320 kilos or... It's a third of a ton. Yes. <laughs> um, it's a third of major damage. <laughs> yeah, super heavyweights never really caught on in the UK for that reason. Right. Um, and in America, Ziggy was just so dominant that everyone just stopped competing. Ziggy now fight, Ziggy's younger brother, you might rec recognize from fights of Battlebots as Lucky. Right. Um, oh, Ziggy needs to go on a diet. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, so the super heavyweight class is dead. Um, lightweight class is very low. You'll see middleweights around. Um, actually, we could have brought- um, Yes, of course. Uh, we we're gonna have a look at it. Uh, uh, we could have brought- Sakyo? No, Raphael. Raphael, um, which is They're Team Saint. Which is Team we'll get Saint, to those in a minute. Which is Team Saint to middleweight. Mm -hmm. uh, I'd also look out for uh, Backflip, who will be coming this weekend. It's a, um, it's a middleweight flipper that's uh, shaped like uh, the Star Destroyer from Star Wars. All right. Um, and the whole thing sort of like tips backwards. Incredible. It's got, uh, and it comes on to the Imperial March. You can't miss <laughs> it. <laughs> yes, I um, do some good entrance music. 
Yeah. Right, quick question before we disappear. What is, in your opinion, the most destructive weight class? Ooh. Destructive is, is well, heavyweights do the most damage. Sure. And the, the damage that is the hardest to repair. Sure, yeah. But pound for pound, obviously, actually, as you get smaller, the moment the, uh, the power to weight ratio increases. Like, yeah. where does it meet, do you think? I'd say, actually, beetle weights are right. the most dangerous one to get into because the weights are so tight and it is such a competitive class. If you've watched any of the beetle weight contents, the one, um, the three, three pounders, one and a half kilos, there are some really talented drivers out there and there are some really, really horrid weapons out there. I like the, the smaller weight classes and this is part of the reason why we want to focus more on like, oh, the featherweights and reactivate and what have you. As much as it is, and you know, you, you know this from being around the scene for years, watching it on TV, is entirely different to seeing it live. Mm -hmm. Like, this is, <laughs> I'm terrified actually walking around here at just how much damage some of these, these guys can do. But it does seem to me that, you know, once you get to that, that featherweight, I've seen some really, really incredible designs, but also some real destruction at the featherweight level. Oh yeah, no, definitely. There are some people, there are some robots, I, I think, Featherweights, I always recommend because there's a great spread of them, and there's sure. a great spread of opportunities to do different things in the weight class. There are, um, and there are different levels of combat. So there are people who will run no contact events, yep. like no spinners, no grabbers, nothing piercing. Yep. And then there are uh, people who will do full on heavy, like scary robots tearing into each other all day, and you've got to survive it sort of contests. Um, so you really do have the opportunity, but there are some robots that if they put their names down for full contact event, no one will want to go into the arena with them. Right. Um, so if Ellis with Magnetar turns up and he has something called Neon with him. Oh yes, I've seen Neon, yeah. People will run in terror. terror. <laughs> but that's, Neon was literally built to fight heavyweights. Somebody said to me the other day, Neon would be competitive against the heavyweights. It has. So in a uh, there was a Chinese series called King of Bots, mm -hmm. and uh, Ellis is the wholesaler for Botbits, an Australian company. Right. You might know them on Battle Bots as Death Roll. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, they're run by Steve Martin. They provide. They actually build the ESCs I run in Henry, and they are you know they're Australian. They're tough as old boots. These have been going for four years, and they're still yeah. still as good as new. Um, by the way, the smell of Extreme Robots has just started. Did you get that? <laughs> yes. <laughs> all of that noise you can hear, yeah, all of a sudden just turned into a smell. Yes. That's very much... Bur the, smell <laughs> of, the smell of burned metal. Yep. <laughs> um, so uh, Ellis and Steve teamed up. Ellis brought Death Roll painted blue and into Great White Shark. So the, so the, the, the disc was like a shark's tooth. Yep. And Ellis turned Neon into Remora, which was like a huge, un like a mini boss, effectively. Right. There is footage of Remora one-shotting a Chinese heavyweight. Oh, really? A featherweight managing to, to destroy a heavyweight. I mean, that's why people are afraid to take, put their featherweights in with it. <laughs> Amazing. Right, one last thing before I go. We've got four semi-finalists for the heavyweight yeah. championship. Mega Mass, yep. Thor, Ripper, and... I'm just Tectonic? He knows. Who do you think is going to be the first heavyweight champion? Ripper versus Thor, who wins? Don't think about it. Ripper versus Thor, who Four. wins? Thor. Thor, right, one finalist. Mega Mouse and Tectonic. Tectonic. Right, Tectonic versus Thor. Thor. There you go. <laughs> this is the man who knows. <laughs> I don't. I probably don't. <laughs> do not put money. This is, a, this is like, what's that lab broke thing? When the fun stops, stop. <laughs> <laughs> well, by the time this goes out, we will have a new heavyweight champion. Greg, thank you, man. Hey, no problem. Thank you I'll very much, Glenn. This is Oracle. I love this. Thanks again to Greg for an incredible interview and for explaining to me and letting me play with all of this stuff. Now, this has kind of got me thinking about something. Now, I've been Extreme Robots uh, here now a few months and I have no previous knowledge of engineering at all. But I'm gonna be honest, I've got a bit of a taste for it. So in the next few weeks, we're going to be starting something a little bit new and perhaps I'll be getting my fingers dirty over the summer. Um, it's going to be very interesting and it's going to make you realise just how little I know. Just a pretty face. <laughs>
you know me. <laughs> um, so we'll see you next week for more Reactivate. Thank you again to Greg. And of course, if you need to contact us at all, you can ping us an email, reactivate at extremerobots.co.uk. And we'll see you next Thursday for some more Reactivate.